So the last thing I just want to show you is mathematically what's going on here in, in these structures. So you get the general idea that you're surrounded not just by numbers and, and codes, but they all contain these internal checking devices to make sure that they are not susceptible to silly and simple mistakes. So what happens here is that there is some, uh, you've got some code number, which I'll call A1, A2, A3, A4, up to AN. It's got N digits in it. So this might be your, uh, your mobile phone number. If it starts with letters in it, you carry out some operation to turn the letters uh, into numbers. And then we've seen what you do with that number is to treat it rather like a vector, okay, and form a dot product with another list of numbers, which are what we call the weights. So the even numbers we might leave alone, the odd numbers we double. So what that's like saying, the first number and the third number and the fifth number, we leave alone. So the weights there are one. But the ones in between, the weights are two. We're going to double them. So we take our uh, code number and we form a dot product with this vector of weights. So what that dot product means is that it's A1 times W1 plus A2 times W2 plus A3 times W3 and so on, all the way up to AN times WN. So if you've done vectors at uh, school or college, uh, this is a scalar product. Or you can think of matrix language, this is a row times a column vector. And the answer you get when you multiply all those things together and add them up is just a number. And what happened, okay, was that we then, say, subtracted that answer away from some other number, and we divided it by R or some other 10 or 97 or something like that. Uh, and this was the check digit. So the general pattern of the check digit structure is to start with a, a code number, introduce some collection of weights, choose which numbers in your code number you're going to operate on, uh, and then divide the answer by some number, uh, 10 or 97 or something else, and the check digit is going to be the remainder when you take that away uh, from 10, say, or 97. And here are the examples we looked at. So the universal product code, uh, you had 12 numbers. Uh, the weights were 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1. So you did nothing to the even numbers, but you multiplied the odds by 3. And the final answer had to be divisible by 10. So the, uh, the airline one we looked at the beginning, slightly different. You had 10 digits, there were no weights. So everything was just the same, you just added everything together, the weights were all one, and it had to be divisible by seven. RSBN, ISBN, you had 10 numbers uh, in the old one, uh, sorry, um, nine numbers plus the check digit, and the weights went backwards, 10, 9, 8, 7, 4, 3, 2, 1, divide by 11, and we used X for uh, the number 10. The new ISBN uh, and the product code, uh, you had 12 digits. This time the weights were not 3131, one, they were 131313. One, three, one, three. You multiply this by A, and the answer had to be divisible by 10. So this is a general type of structure for producing robust codes. The only one that's really qualitatively different that uses more sophisticated uh, mathematics, so uses a different algebraic structure than just multiplying these things together, is that on German banknotes. It uses a non-commutative arithmetic, not ordinary arithmetic, uh, developed by Gauss uh, in order to produce their check digit codes. Well, you've probably got extremely worried by this talk, that the whole of your life is surrounded by modular arithmetic and codes uh, and numbers. But uh, finally, as a comforting thought for today, let me show you this picture, which should convince you that sometimes you don't need numbers at all. Thank you. <laughs>